Uh, welcome, Bloodstains, to a very mini sort of pre-cap for the Neophyte League. Uh, this is one of the biggest Neophytes we've ever had. We have 13 coaches altogether, which will mean an AI team, which we will get to in due time. And we're just going to have a look through all the teams so everybody gets a good feel. We've got some new... Uh, coaches joining us and we you know making sure that people recognize which teams they're using and so on and so forth so first of all we'll just go through these one at a time so i think we just have to have an extra special liam trigger warning i know you're very sensitive liam and what you're about to see may very well upset you so uh, if that's going to be the case, now's the time to advert your eyes. The Republic of Orkestan, my Orc team. Uh, <clears throat> so I've gone for what I have as my own standard Orc setup. So as you can see, I've got the four Black Orcs, the four Blitzers and three Linemen. So I can put the three linemen onto the line of scrimmage. I can hold the Black Orcs back a little bit. And uh, with the Blitzers, they're going to serve multiple roles of blitzing, ball handling, and potentially ball sacking as well. Um, I don't go for the Orc thrower straight away. I like to give my Blitzers a chance to level up first if one gets uh, an edge up or rolls a double so I can put dodge on it and I maybe take sure hands after that I find they can be much more effective ball carriers because they start with the movement six although I may eventually have some fun with this team and I'm sort of considering at some point getting a troll and a goblin I don't think it's optimal uh, I wouldn't usually advise taking a troll on an orc team they're massively unreliable um, and with once the Black Orcs start to level up, uh, the troll isn't really needed. So, yeah, very standard, my own standard Orc team build. It gives me three rerolls, no Apothecary, allows me to have 30k in the bank. I'll probably get the Apothecary after the first game, unless I lose and roll really badly on my uh, winnings. So we'll move on to the next team. This is Callum, who does the recaps. Callum, we have two Callums now. So, but you'll all recognize this, uh, this Callum. So he's gone for an underworld team. Uh, I think he'll enjoy it. Uh, he, it's a reasonably standard build. So he's taken all the Skavens, two Skaven throwers, two Skaven blitzers, two Skaven lines, the Warpstone troll, uh, filled out with uh, goblins and taking an extra goblin for the bench. That still allows him to take the three rolls and he can buy an Apothecary because the goblins are really, really cheap. So the advantage of the Underworld team, of course, is they get mutations on a normal roll. Um, well, if, if Callum follows the meta, we'll be seeing a lot of two-headed goblins appearing. Uh, maybe a second skill on one or two will be uh, big hands uh, where they can basically uh, they stunt ignores the tackle zones for dodging uh, two heads adds plus one to the dodge roll so he's dodging everywhere through tackle zones on a two plus and big hands ignores uh, tackle zones on the ball so he can jump in five tackle zones on the ball that's a two plus dodge into that and a three plus uh, pick up roll and then he can just dodge straight back out again. So, uh, but he may not follow the meta. He may decide to do other things. Uh, the, the blitzers, he gets a few options. He can turn them into killers uh, and support with guard and things like that. Uh, the Skaven throwers, uh, I mean, it's Callum. He may try to build in some kind of a passing game. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where he takes the team over the course of the season. <coughs> After that, we have Adam's Camry team. So Adam's just joined the main league. He was in a very, very short near fate just to allow him to qualify to get into the main season. 
with six games. It has to be said, he's actually playing that team pretty well. But this was just a chance for him to get a team before season 16 if he wanted to put in something a bit more leveled up. Uh, we I do all usually have a mix of TVs in the, the main season anyway. So he's gone for a uh, uh, all four Tomb Guardians. Uh, one Blitz Ra and two Throw Ra's and the rest Skellies. Of course, this is probably just thinking, well, there were Adj 2 across the board, uh, not a lot of ball handling going on, so having the two Throw Ra's, uh, it kind of can mitigate that a little bit. And if one gets bashed off the field, because there's lots of AV7, as you can see, he still has a backup one there. Uh, one Blitz Ra, uh, I imagine he will pick up the second one when he can. Uh, obviously, uh, Camry do don't have the choice of getting a, uh, a pocket ferry because they all have regem, which uh, Matt Oakley will tell you is a fake skill because it never works for him, but it can come up sometimes. Allow them to get the three rerolls uh, with the low edge uh, and no block on the Tomb Guardians, and they can only get it on a double. Uh, he may be going through those re-rolls a little bit, and so it sort of can be sensible uh, to try and buy as many as you can get up. Make sure you have the three at the start. After that, we have Willem with a Bretonian team. And I know nothing about Bretonian teams because I've never really played them before. I only really know them from playing against them, um, watching them play and, and things like that. So... He's gone for the four blitzers and the three blockers and the rest lines. Does that seem sort of reasonable to me? Um, two re-rolls <coughs> and, and an apocryphary. I think the two re-rolls should be fine to start with. He may buy a third one as it goes because we can see, you know, he's got block and wrestle uh, going on, which, which you know, uh, inherent save you having to burn through too many re-rolls. If he tries to do a lot of dodging, that might be a bit of a different story with an <coughs> Adja 3 and no players would dodge at the moment. I'm sure that will probably change as the season progresses. Um, I have no idea <coughs> what optimum builds are for, for Bretonian teams, really. Uh, I find them a bit weird and they've never really appealed to me personally to play. Although I may try them out at some point, just, you know, just, just, just to see what I can do with them. Um, so yeah, it, it uh, will be interesting. I think you did once say it was one of his favourite teams, but that was probably like two, three years ago, so that may have changed since then. Um, oh, spoiler alert. Uh, this is Fraser's Amazon team. So we won't comment on the fact that Fraser said he felt he might be a bit too busy to join the main league and then decided, oh, do you know what, I'm going to join the near fate instead, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, um, as things change. So we've got, uh, sorry, we've got um, all four blitzers, that's pretty much a given, uh, you need to take them. Uh, there's a lot of difference in, of opinions of really what sort of an Amazon team is. As far as I'm concerned, they're a bash team. Uh, it doesn't matter that they have positionals called light uh, throwers and catchers. Uh, that, that's not going to be their main uh, avenue. You know, they they end up with. You can see they all all everything starts with dodge. Four of these plays start with blodge. All these other plays have general as a, as a primary skill group. They can all become blodgers reasonably quickly so um, you can build a bit of a throwing game into them uh, although he's only taken the two throwers so it looks like he's probably going to use them as his main ball handlers I mean um, having the pass skill it means doing a quick pass on a three plus in a dire situation you know that's not the end of the world it's three plus uh, then a th potentially a uh, two plus that would be three plus catch as well if it's an accurate pass so and he gets that inherent re-roll but he isn't going to be trying to lob the ball up the field like a wood elf field there here that was just 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 not how they play so yeah they're, they're a bash running team um and they can become quite effective at it you know you get some guard and mighty blow on those blitzers with a bit of tackle 
scattered throughout it. They could be quite dominant. The one downside, of course, they have is they're all AV7. But <coughs> they're quite a strong team in this sort of a league where everybody's TV 100. And you'll start to see that you saw on my team. I've only got four block players at the moment. I need to develop more into that. We also have Halfling Hot Pot is a new player called Joe. He's first time into the season. He was brought uh, into the league via uh, Ben. But he messaged me, but I think he knows Daniel. Um, he probably knows Adam. So <coughs> that's they, they're kind of all the 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 Daniel line of people that have been brought in. But of course we are one league and you're not allowed to faction off and, and become cliquey. We are just one we're all bloodstains now. So that's the way it goes now. That's it. This is your life. Yeah? You forget all your old friends. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so he's gone for an Urgle team. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, Ben was saying that um I didn't know. I mean, I, I, it's fine. I mean, if you get new people and that, I think these guys have been playing Blood Bowl um, and setting up and just seeing if they like the game and trying some teams out. So <laughs> I'm sure he knows what he's getting into with Nurgle because this is a team that can be very strong, but they need the development. I mean, he needs to make use of the fact that he's got 13 games coming up because no block at all. Um, on a team that's going to solely rely on bashing. Now, he hasn't started with a Beast of Nurgle. <coughs> and, I'm, and he's taken an extra Pestagor. Uh, and that's allowed him to also, he can start with two uh, re team rerolls. And of course, it's a regen team, so he, he doesn't get an Apocrypha. He's got to rely on the regens. <coughs> I mean, um, this is a team where I, uh, people do do very well with Nurgle teams uh, from the off. Uh, but you can get a bit come undone because of the lack of block uh, and the lack of ball handling skills at the start. Obviously, I didn't expect to start seeing that sort of stuff being built in. They get mutations on the normal. You can give uh, Pestagore, uh, obviously you can give him short hands on the general. They all get general as well. And then he can take extra arms so he can pick the ball up on a 2+. plus. Um, and they have a lot of options. <coughs> I mean, we won't be seeing a lot of passing plays in near fate because it's very bash heavy near fate. So the disturbing presence uh, b b probably won't be uh, as effective as it might be I in other competitions. But you know, you develop them up. You never know what you're going to what these they might come up against in the future. So I think they're a fun team to play. So. We will be on the watch on that. So Ken has returned. <coughs> He's gone for an orc team as well. So we've got two orc teams, but they have been we've, we've been we've built them slightly differently to each other, which is great. He started with a thrower. Just because I don't take one, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Um, it's a different philosophy. He's going to have more reliable ball handling uh, earlier than I am. Um, He's probably thinking he'll always put the Black Orcs in the line of scrimmage, and plenty of Orc players do do that. <coughs> um, so yeah, and uh, I, I, I always I see people doing things like putting uh, accurate and all these passing skills onto the thrower. The only only passing skill I would put onto the thrower really, unless he gets an edge up, is something is uh, leader for the r cheaper reroll. And then drop one of the three rerolls that he has. He has to start with an apocrypha. He's a little bit further away from buying one than I than the other orc team is, obviously. Uh, but that's within a game, two games, two games. I, I would imagine potentially one game if he can get four or more on his winnings roll. So, so yeah, this isn't the 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 the, the, the it's just different. It's this thing. It's just different, you know. And uh, he hasn't gone for a troll either. Uh, I think he, hopefully he knows, you know, they are just far too unreliable. Uh, if he wants to try one out, by all means, try one out. I mean, uh, a lot of Orc teams we see do try one out, out end up firing them because they just stand in the middle of the pitch being really stupid and that's it. That's all they do. <coughs> so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how, how, how the two teams develop uh, and, uh, yeah. After that, we have Rob Top's Camry team. And again, 
built very differently to the other Camry T. Well, very differently. <laughs> I don't, I don't suppose there's a, there's a slight difference in how they build it, but uh, they will play actually quite differently. So he has four Tomb Guardians. He's gone for two Blitz Ras, no Throw Ras, and some Skeletons. And um, it'll be. It, I think he's aware that not having the throw raw means the ball handling is going to suffer. He's going to have to love the four plus pickups. He's going to have to do all he's picking, trying to picking up the ball as pretty much the last thing he attempts, even if the ball is in danger. You know, he's going to you have to really think quite hard about how you're positioning your players before you attempt to pick up the ball. <clears throat> it's not like Skaven where you can just jump a gut runner in. And boom, it's a two plus, and you've got all that control over it. If the ball lands in a way that the opposing team can get to it, he's going to have to pay very careful attention to that. Both Camry teams really are, but <coughs> without the inherent reroll of a throw raw, uh, that's what he's going to have to do. Now, I know he's got a game plan for this team because he's told me it, but I am not going to repeat it. Um, so we can all have the thrill of watching the team develop. Uh, after that, we have Ben's Dwarf Team. So, after playing High Elves and some Zons, I think he wanted something with just a bit more sturdiness about them. Um, it's a fairly standard Dwarf setup. I mean, you've taken all the positionals here, and he's taken all the long beards. Now, obviously, there's Dwarves do sort of end up with a very standard progression on the long beards but you, you can throw in a few options in on onto some of these positionals i mean we see uh, uh i've seen different building philosophies on troll slayers uh runners uh i want someone to build a, a throwing dwarf team at some point don't do this though <laughs> ben it's, it's hard because i just think that's cool It'll probably be i'll do it if i want to see it so badly then i'll put together a dwarf team and i'll do it myself obviously but um no, it's good. He's got three re-rolls. He needs to get an Apothecary. He's going to need 50k for that. Uh, two games. Again, I would imagine uh, possibly three. And if he's really lucky, one. Um, it's bash heavy, but with his start of a thing, there's no mighty blow. I mean, by the time he's starting to face teams that have those skills, he'll have his own bash skills, and he'll have an Apothecary by then as well. So... Yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting. Of course, the tackle won't really kick it. Oh, it'll be good against the underworld, uh, but as you can see, for nearly everything else, that's not going to come into play very much at the beginning. Obviously, when we can, th there will be dodge players in some of these teams later on. <coughs> After that, we have Liam. And he's gone for another Nurgle team. Now, I know the reason why he's done it is he thought of this team name. Uh, it's because he, he did the coronavirus. Was it somebody did coronavirus cult? I'm sure that was like, I think we've had a couple of coronavirus themed Nurgle teams. But he thought of this name and he, he, did, he wanted to bring that in. So um, he's probably going to retire his other Nurgle team. He definitely did do one because uh, he's reused some of the names, which is absolutely fine. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously, the socialistic, communistic orcs are the absolute cure for the disease. Because, you know, we know that socialistic policies and politics cures all the world's ills. I mean, you know, absolutely 100%. And... You know, so 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 that, that he's going to come a cropper with that. I mean, absolutely, obviously, you know. Um, but um, oh, the, the the no talking about politics in a serious way rule. By the way, everybody is still in effect. <coughs> oh, I'm just joking. Okay, so you got big guys with mighty blow. So it's not going to really uh, be the end. I mean, because uh, 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 he does have the beast of Nurgle, it's important. I think to remember that the Beast of Nurgle is not a hitting player. You know, it's he's got tentacles with his strength five. It's to get him into a position as a roadblock and just 
leave him there and you know babysit to move him again and then babysit to move him again uh, I've only the, the, so far from what I've seen uh, Leon has actually performed that in uh, with his Nurgle team pretty effectively I keep watching other Nurgle I'm like why are you hitting with the beast of Nurgle oh look you got it both down oh look well, he's on the floor and now <laughs> it's a turnover because you don't have a block and the tentacles ain't going to do you any good down there is it you know um but, you know, sometimes it, you still have to hit. I mean, it's like all these sort of things. You've got to work that out. And, oh, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you all how to play your teams. This is just my own perspective and what I think and whatever you want to do. So he has sacrificed uh, Nurgle Warrior in order to take the beast. And he's got one Pestigal. So what, 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 what he's done is try to <coughs> do it so he can get the uh, three re-rolls. He could have potentially have not taken a re-roll and that would have given him uh, 70k or not take two re-rolls start with one re-roll and and take the fourth warrior which which some nurgle players would do but of course that's massively risky i mean the cost of the warrior is not going to change what the cost of the re-rolls do so it's just say you know there are alternate builds going on here and this will be fine you know um you probably wants to get the fourth warrior and then get the rest of the pestigors in quickly but obviously if any of you disagree feel free to say in the comments and now we have leon's dark elves so this is not liam this is leon uh so uh leon has since he's rejoined us uh because he took a little bit of a break he, he's played lizards and uh, now he's playing Nurgle, uh, and I think he played something else. Oh, he played Bretts in one of the Neophytes. I don't think he got as into them. Um, uh, it's a slightly bash-heavy league, but you know what? Sometimes being one of the only edge teams in a bash-heavy league will end up doing you a lot of favours, you know. Uh, he's gone for a reasonably standard Dark Elf roster here. He's gone for the four Blitzers. Not everybody takes a runner. Um... But he's only got the one, so, you know, you can see how it works out for him. I mean, dump-off can be great. I always... It's it's never really appealed to me because of, uh, I might try it at some point, but it's like, you know, oh, I dump-off, oh, i got to push. I didn't really need to dump-off at that point. <laughs> you know, you got to declare the dump-off before you actually, the block dice are actually rolled, so... Um, but I've also seen dump-off actually save a lot of players' bacon, and it's annoying as hell. It's, it really is annoying as hell. You hit the ball carrier, you get the pow, but he's dumped off. So he's no longer got the ball and the ball's probably on a blitzer or something like that. So um, it, 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 it can, it's a good skill. It's just when do you use it and things like that. And he's gone for uh, obviously the rest up to Lyman. No Apocryphary, two rerolls. It's about right. Our, our Dark Elves are an expensive team to sort of build this up. And um, I imagine... Uh, he'll get the Apocryphary first, get the, potentially get a third reroll, so 100k, and then maybe go for a Witch Elf. Or he might go for a Witch Elf before he goes for the third reroll, so it'll be interesting to see how he handles that, because uh, the, the cost of everything, you know. Uh, but, you know, after 13 games, he'll have a fully developed team, and he'll have everything that he wants. He might even just try to play with just the two rerolls, we don't know, you know. But we should definitely see how that goes. After that, we have Chris Shinners with a Chaos Dwarf team. So let's just have a, a small look. Uh, he has gone for one Bull Centaur. And he has gone uh, one, two, three, four, five. So all the Chaos Dwarf blockers have filled out the rest with Hobgoblins. So... He's gone for three re-rolls. I imagine that's why he's only start with the one bull centaur. And that's this is actually a fairly common Chaos Dwarf starting build. Uh, you know, uh, he can get the Apocryphary and then he can save up and he can get the second bull centaur. Um, I, I mean, you know, uh, there's a, an opinion that the the, bull, the Chaos Dwarf Minotaur isn't really worth it. It's not, it gets mutations on a double, unlike the Chaos Minotaur that gets them on the singles. But, you know, if you can build it into your team, also because you end up blitzing a lot with the Bull Centaurs, it'll be interesting to see whether he makes the Bull Centaurs a ball carrier. We've seen that happening. 
uh, or whether he's going to make a hobgoblin uh, ball carrier, which we've also seen, and both work. If you know, you've just got to adjust how you're playing, depending on what you choose there. So, and there are inherent advantages and disadvantages to doing it both ways. I mean, the ball centaur is one of your fastest players. Movement six, sprint four feet. He's strength four. He's edge two, but you put sure hands on him if you're going to make him a ball carrier. So you know that he has options. So again, you know, I could, the, 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 there are different ways he could play this, and the, you know, he may still take a minor toy. He might not even care what I say, just <laughs> which is fair enough. None of you have to care what I say, unless I'm telling you to follow the rules, and you absolutely do. But when it comes to your team builds and stuff like that, you can all do what you like. You know, it's all good. And this is. New Callum, so New Callum has just just uh, joined us. Uh, Fraser's brought him in. I imagine if Fraser's brought him in, he probably knows Leon uh, and uh, other Callum and you know all the people uh, from Stains, which is why we're called Bloodstains. Um, we probably all inhabit the same sh shop. I may have met him in passing, but that's that's all good. It's all fine. So in this Zon team. We've gone, I'm not going to repeat everything I said on the first Zon team. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at the builds of the four blitzes, which is great. A thrower and a catcher. I mean, the different skill accesses on both. I mean, you know, it, it, it you know, it, it's fine, you know. Um, the catcher gets uh, access to agility skills. You know, you can take sidestep and you can take... Um, Try oh god, my brain's going dead because of the heat. Uh, but yeah, agility skill type stuff. Sidestep is just the first one because it's a pretty good skill to to sort of take. And other than that, it's kind of the same that you, the thing. He's gone for four re rolls. Um, all the experienced players are going to be saying, "Oh, that's one too many. You don't need to take four and and all of that." But if he is a bit of a newer player, uh, he might just want that as a bit of a as a. Uh, sort of a comfort zone thing so I guess my advice is going to be is try to survive with three you still have the one for backup you should just just try to get through it with three don't re-roll pushes don't re-roll stuff that doesn't cause turnovers I mean, this this is the sort of advice that the more people who have been playing it for years it, it is going to say you know um, th there are always exceptions so if you're trying to get the ball carrier down if you don't get him down, he's going to score like an equalizing or maybe a winning touchdown and you're going for the tie or whatever it is. Yeah, then you might re-roll the push. Um, or maybe you want to surf a player off and it's it's, an, it's a great, but it's a good player to surf off and you don't get a, some kind of result with it and pushing it, then maybe re-roll it at that point. Um, like double both downs, even though you've got block or something like that. Uh, so just just if you can if you watch your reroll management, uh, because that's 50k of TV. That that if you can get it down to three rerolls that you're saving on. So, um, but we do have coaches who actually have taken a lot of rerolls in the few in in on their teams, and we've all stood back in in shock and horror. Shock and horror, I tell you, that they've taken like five rerolls. It's like you don't need five rerolls, and they they still go on to win. Uh, it doesn't affect them, and they don't care about the they're giving away inducements and things like that because they're still going on to win. So it's all relative. And so I've gone for the AI team. I've gone for a Norse team. So they actually do have a, a method behind uh, <coughs> the teams I choose for the AI. We have experimented, obviously, over the uh, five years, I think, we've been doing this. Um, we found, obviously, running teams with inherent skills that tend to put up a good fight. So, a uh, uh, near fate, Zons tend to end up winning, uh, has, has beaten people. Um, uh, dwarves are giving people a good run for their money. Although you end up outmaneuvering them as you get better at the game and they become not quite as, as good. We actually found Dark Elves to be surprisingly good in um, the main league where you get a higher TV and they're a bit more developed when they're in there. So <coughs> I don't I don't like putting an AI team in that, that duplicates a human team's team. So we don't have we have we have all those teams I just mentioned are, are actually we've got two Amazon teams. We've got the dwarf team, we've got dark elf team, and I was just thinking about it and I was like, well you know what? I think 
this will be the team that that might cause a few issues for people so we do have a sort of thing if you it, <coughs> coaches and good coaches i might add have lost to ai teams you get a bit of ribbing but uh, i i would i would keep it down because you do you if, if you get too over the top you can guarantee the team will then beat you <laughs> I uh, imagine losing to the AI team that would be awful that would be terrible like the next game they actually lose to the AI you know um, so it's a uh, you know they they they've it doesn't matter really uh, they they've set it up okay they haven't taken the um, yeti uh, it's taken a cheerleader <laughs> Uh, two team rerolls, not no apocryphary. Uh, the AI does tend to favour rerolls quite heavily. Um, I play the AI a lot, even though it's boring as hell because I try to build up the in-game currency. But um, I've kind of given up doing that now because it is so boring. But they will take a million rerolls. So you can probably hear my Facebook going off in the background. I forgot to turn it off. People are probably trying to message me, but we're near the end of. Uh, this video so I'm gonna actually get this started now and uh, we can maybe have a look at the fixtures so here we go start competition and there we go so uh, Chris Schinners gets to go up against the AI I might have to just quickly <laughs> flip backwards and forwards uh, what have we got the golden ducks okay so we got uh, Amazons versus the Dark Elves. So, okay, I expect Chris to beat the AI. You know, I, I expect everybody to beat the AI. That doesn't mean it will happen uh, and all of that, but, um, I, I, you know, uh, uh, that would be my expectation. Everyone beats the AI. So, we got Amazons uh, versus Dark Elves. Um, Dark Elves are going to have the advantage that they're faster and they've got more agility, but the Amazons have the advantage that they start off with a lot of blodging and they. The blitzes are going to be awfully, terribly hard to knock down. We have uh, the mighty, the Republic of Orkestan. And, oh, and it's the perfect. It's, it's, it's the showdown. It is the the showdown of the season in round one, folks. It, it really, really is. You know, the, so that's me versus Liam. And uh, of course, I understand. I'm not really picking on Liam. I know this is probably. Somebody going, oh god, this is borderline bullying the poor man. But we actually know each other quite well. It's it's, it's cool. It's cool. He's pretty thick skinned, and he knows I'm just trying to wind him up. But you know, as we know, communism is absolutely the pinnacle of political systems. It's like the champagne of political systems. So I, I'm sure that he will be like in awe of this team. So it, yeah, actually, this could go either way. Either the orcs have the a bit of an advantage that we've got four block players. Um, I think uh, uh, the they they have the the Wuhan clan have um, you know it's not like he he's afraid of taking the Mickey out of people as well um, but, you know they've got the big guy they're going to be able to pin down players as well they've all got a lot of pitch control I mean like I said you know orcs aren't going to really pass that much but you might try and do a cheeky uh, short pass or something it's going to be that's not really going to be an option because we're going to end up brawling in the middle of the pitch. So, and even doing handoffs, I think, is affected by um, disturbing presence. So, and you know, uh, foul appearance, uh, if it triggers, is a real pain in the backside. It doesn't always trigger, it's a two plus, uh, so it only triggers on a one, but uh, which I roll the opposition team rolls. So, you know, I think it'll be an interesting match. We have the underworld uh, magically a gathering that's definitely going to be somebody oh no, that's magically a gathering for a dwarf team that's an interesting choice of team name for dwarves there ben oh anyway so yeah uh i would give it to ben i mean that's not a stain on callum at all it's just um all the tackle uh and all the block, uh, and all of that, I mean, but Callum, Callum, I mean, and so, so that I, I'm going to give the slight edge to the Dwarves on this one. I think uh, Callum could actually still win it as well. I mean, he's just going to have to outmaneuver the Dwarves. He's going to have to use the Skaven players 
uh, to to their maximum potential in this in this match and expect to lose a few goblins. Um, but it's good. You're getting this match done and out the way in the first round. That's great for you because none of your players are leveled up yet, Callum. So that's really cool. And uh, it's a time to duel. Is Adam versus Mr. Mose. See, I didn't read out their team name, so I haven't actually learned. Oh, okay. We're going to have uh, Kemri versus Kemri right from the off so <laughs> either way I'm I don't I don't care about fence sitting man I ain't going to try and call that you know um I think I think people might uh give Rob top the edge because he's been playing a lot of blood ball for 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 a long time um he plays in obscene amounts of leagues and reads all the guides and watches 15 games a day and and all that sort of thing um, some of this might be exaggerated, uh, but Adam has shown himself to be quite a solid player. Uh, he beat my team, you know, the Skaven team, in round two of the main season. He played a really solid game through there. He's not making mistakes that we sometimes associate with newer players. So I, I, I don't, it, it'll be interesting to see. And because they're two new Kemri teams, <coughs> neither team really has an inherent advantage over the other one, you know. One has two throw rails, the other one has two blitzers. Uh, both of those are going to going to see that they're going to be advantages to, to both those philosophies. So yep, yeah, so we've got I know, dude, where's my orc? Is Ken? But that's uh, easy because it's similar to another name that he had. So that's uh, Willem versus Ken. Um, <coughs> I think the Bretts have an advantage in this game in that they've got plenty of things that mitigate the both down rolls. Um, at the moment, so uh, Ken's going to have to do some clever placing with his blitzers. Uh, he's going to have to expect to re re rolls when he's trying to hit with the black orcs, and inevitably they roll a both down and a skull or whatever it is. That that will change over time. I mean, you know, as the black orcs level and start getting blocked, that might that that will definitely change over time. But if if Willem needs to basically use the fact that he has more inherent skills. He has Dauntless on his players as well, so I know it's a it's a roll, but um, that's going to mitigate also mitigate the strength for Black Orcs. So uh, again, or well, most of these games go either way. Uh, Ken's going to have to be aware of those that, and he's going to have to to change. He's he's going to have to accommodate that in his in his tactics and 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 what he's doing, and then be careful with his positioning. So we have. Uh, Fraser, Fraser, yeah, versus Joe. So, I mean, obviously, Joe is a completely unknown to the to some of us in the league. Um, <coughs> you know, um, uh, but he has been uh, playing. I think again, the Amazons get an advantage. Uh, by being a team that starts with so much block and, and dodge and and obviously the Nurgle don't um, you got to use but you got to use the pitch control to your best advantage uh, you don't have a beast of Nurgle so you're not going to be pinning players down with the tentacles but you know um, you got to get your disturbing presence players in a position where if he tries to throw the ball he's going to be like at minus three and it isn't going to be worth it and uh you know, you just got to be aware that I mean, not he, he, his whole team isn't blodge. Only four of them are. Uh, the rest have um, dodge, but of course you have no block. So um, I think Amazons are always a little bit on the favourite right at the start of a season like this, and it's got. But they're not unbeatable. You know, they don't move. They don't have many fast players. Uh, they don't. They only have average strength across the board. You've got to use the advantages that you do have in the, in the best way possible and yeah so it should be an interesting near fate i'm going to try and uh watch uh some of the newer players uh try to get a feel uh, i'm going to possibly stream some of the matches i might come back and do a mid-season review um we're not going to be doing re the recaps and most of the effort does go into the main season that that is the season to win 
this season is just for leveling up. There's a little bit of prestige if you win. If you win, you get you get congratulated. And but we don't track near fate winners. It's not the main thing <coughs> for the experienced players who already qualify to play in the main leagues. They can play around with a team and maybe get some levels on them. And some of us do actually enter unlevel teams up in the main season. It isn't always all experienced teams. And this allows newer players to sort of start off on a nice even TV footing. Not you don't have to deal with inducements right away. Uh, you might do as it, as it progresses. So, um, well, I mean, so where, where's the new player coming into the go? Oh God, look at this in the main season, man. They're getting recaps and strings <laughs> and all this stuff. We'll, we'll try and do some stuff for 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 the near fate. We a, a lot of us do think about that and do come come back to that. So, I mean, if other people want to start streaming. That would be great, but it's not a necessity. Uh, obviously, so, as some of you have known, I am sending messages around to see if people want to come and stream games with me. Uh, that's been somewhat successful. Even the people that haven't been quite able to do it for, for real life reasons have said, yeah, but ask again. You know, I, I might I'll be free from this state onwards, and I definitely want to come in and do that. If you haven't had a message like that, don't panic. Uh, most of the league is going to eventually at some point be asked, not if you're a new player playing your first Neophyte, unless you request it with me. Um, I, I'm not going to, you know, th th this is the Neophyte for you guys, is, uh, for us to make sure you're a good fit, and for you to make sure we're a good fit, and to make sure that you're going to have the time to dedicate to playing at least one game a week, and it's something that you definitely want to do. Uh, because we don't like dropouts in the main leagues, and we've had problems with that in the past, which is why we do this. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I think I've gone through all the teams. Feel free to tell me I'm full of rubbish down in the comments. Um, uh, or, you know, I've got it all completely spot on, and I'm like the greatest, you know, Blood Bowl commentator ever, <laughs> which I don't think that's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, the round has started. I'm going to upload uh, this video and then once this uploads, I am then going to put up the post on Facebook and we will go from there. And I will see you all on the pitch. Until next time, Bloodstains, signing out.